Yeah, okay. And we are recording. I'm here with my friend Mike Madney. Hey there, Mike. Hey, thank you. Have me on. Appreciate this. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you for being here. You having a beer? Uh, well, actually, this is water, uh, Perrier. Oh. <laughs> a, little, a little too early here for a beer. Yeah, yeah. So it's what one thirty p.m. here. What time is it over there? Uh, it's about three o'clock here. Yeah, okay. so actually, not early for a beer. If you get <laughs> go get a beer in a minute. <laughs> you could be starting. You could be starting for later, right? Yeah, five o'clock somewhere, like they say, right? Right, right. I like that. Okay, so Mike, thank you for coming. Uh, I know you're a musician, right? Right. Uh, so yeah, tell me about it. Tell me, are you active in music right now? You know, you're in a band. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I've got an album out right now. Uh, it's it's called The Red Man and the Redneck. And uh, <laughs> Stevie Silas. And Stevie Silas is a big wig. He's, uh, he was a guitar player for, uh, uh, gosh, he was Rod Stewart's guitar player. He's a guitar player for Mick Jagger. He, this guy's produced a lot of stuff. A big name. And I was happy to get the chance to work with him so yeah again the album it's it's just under my band's name is just matney and yeah. the name of the album is uh the the redneck and the red man wow man that's awesome great title i just put it on and it was the first thing i saw the redneck awesome. and the red man awesome man sounds Very pretty cool. good how do you come up with that title well uh <laughs> actually Stevie, uh, Stevie is a full-blooded Apache, and uh, oh. he did, he he did a, a documentary uh, called Rumble: The Indians That Rocked the World, and it won the Sundance Film Festival Award a couple of years ago. And it's all about how the Native Americans kind of got left out of the rock and roll scene, even though they were they played a a, a big role in it, but. Uh, history kind of left them out and uh this documentary goes back and touches on it and shows some of the thing like like link ray you know uh he, the guy who really invented the power cord you know so uh it's, it's just a very interesting documentary and stevie stevie is an awesome dude man i mean he's got a he's he's uh rolling stone called him um uh, one of the top 50 greatest guitar players ever you know so he's all over the album too so if, if you get a chance take, take a listen to it Man, okay, okay. So, yeah, you're saying that he won the Sundance Festival with a documentary about how the Native Americans were left out of rock and roll. Exactly, exactly. Uh, man, man. Yeah. I never heard that. Really, what's the name of this guy? He's a guitar player. You say he's your friend. Yeah, it's Stevie Silas. He's the guy who produced my album, and the uh, name of the name of the documentary is Rumble. Uh, R U M E L E, uh, uh -huh. the Indians that rock the world. Wow, man! It was on Netflix and stuff. I don't know if it still is now or not, but uh, yeah. Uh huh. There you go. All right. So this the the producer of your album was the man who made this movie. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's a big wig, man. He runs with all the big big guys. I mean, uh, Stevie. Uh -huh. He's been around for years. He he's produced a lot of the bands that uh, that you've heard grew up with, like Duran Duran and the Tubes. And I mean, he's just uh huh. This guy, Stevie Salas. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of iconic. Yeah. Oh man, awesome the... dude. I'm sorry. The boss. He's a boss. Okay, okay. This is okay. Yeah, I've heard Duran Duran. So he, he was the producer. Yeah, he, he's he's produced all kinds of people. Uh, right. He's been at it for years. He's he's got a, a book, a great book out that. Uh -huh. you read, but, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. It'll be glad. I'll, I'll be I'll be happy to have him over. You know, interview him. You you. How did you get in touch with him? You hired him for your album. Yeah, that's a crazy story. Uh, I was actually, uh, I was taking a course online, a, a music business course. And uh, part of the course was, I mean, I've got a degree in recording industry management. I've got a bachelor's degree in that, but I was taking this course online uh, here a few couple years ago. Uh, 
and part of one of the things that it asks you to do is to reach out collaboration if you wanted to collaborate with somebody. And I've never done that before. So, you know, Stevie's kind of one of my heroes. So I wrote Stevie a letter and I didn't, I never even in the world thought he would write back, but he did. And uh, we got to talking and uh, I got excited about it. I wrote on Facebook, I posted, hey, Stevie Salas wrote me. And one of my buddies that I played in a band, I played in a band out of Canada too called Zed Head. And uh, yeah. one, of, one of my buddies wrote back and said, uh, Hey, tell Stevie I said hi. And I was like, what? And so next thing I know, Stevie writes back and says, hey, I've, we've got mutual friends. Let's do this. So uh, uh, it was on. You know? Wow. What a great story. There's uh, the Red Man and the Red Neck, man. Do you mind if we play uh, one of your songs? Oh, I wish you would. Uh, play, uh, I think you might like All Fired Up or All Fired Up or uh, okay. Rebels. Okay, okay. Let me share my screen. So this is your album, man, right? This is your album. Yes, sir. See it? Okay. You released it how long ago? Uh, It was in April. Oh, okay. So it's brand new. Yeah, we, we released it on a UK label called Roulette. And we've uh, been on the radio and stuff in the UK and uh, over in Europe a little bit. Doing uh -huh. All right. Sounds pretty cool. So you're the singer? Yes, sir. Yeah. I wrote the tune. Stevie Stevie actually helped me co-write and, uh, and uh -huh. uh, write it and perform. And, I've, of course, we got a, we've got a band now, got a live band, get ready to go out, do, do a little touring. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll come to Peru. You guys have a lot of shows there? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got, well, the big names come, but like 20 years after they were famous, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big topic about the music scene in Peru and how there are some shows. I mean, like Oasis, I think, is going to come, and then Paul McCartney's been here. and But it's got to be like big names to fill up the stadiums, you know, like we've got big stadiums. And the small shows, there's some local rock, rock shows too. Yeah, you're welcome, man. You want to come, you watch the scene. You uh, know? I had a buddy that just uh, went to South America, and he's pretty big. His name's Ron Keel, K-E-E-L. And uh, he did some shows and toured around down there. And it looked like it was a lot of fun. It looked like, you know. Oh, yeah. They really enjoyed themselves. Argentina, Argentina is a great place to play. Argentina is awesome, yeah. Maybe Colombia, Colombia too. Peru is a good place to play too. Like it's a new thing. That's you know, yeah. kind of new, kind of new. So people are really excited. Even the new generations like are growing into this, and they're kind of like into rock and roll. Like it's it's a new thing we've acquired culturally. You know, after globalization and after the internet and all, it's like for instance, I started playing guitar, started playing rock and roll, like listening to Sabbath and Led Zeppelin and Guns N' Roses, just all of this. But I was listening to it like in two thousand four or five. So you're so you're a musician then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome, great. Do you have a band? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show you just after we finish this one. I actually am. I'm, I'm solo now. I'm a solo musician. I used to play in bands too. I've been in rock and roll bands, but now I do Latin music. Oh, perfect. I love yes. it. Yes. So I'm also, I was in New York. I was in New York this May, this last May. And wow. I was looking for musicians to hook up and to put on a show. I even was going to do a party in Prospect Park. You, are you in New York? Oh, no, I'm in Virginia. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But, okay. I have some buddies in New York that play and they do, uh, it's, uh, one from Brazil. He's a great drummer. I wish I'd known you there. I'd have hooked you up. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to be in Miami on January. I was in New York just a month. That's pretty cool, man. I used to play rock and roll, too, when I was growing up. Let me let me show you my stuff now. I uh, Like I was saying, like in Peru, uh, we grew into rock and roll uh, like a little late because when it was like big in the 70s, it, it didn't really come here because, you know, it was not such a good business to bring the records. Like there was... You know, you couldn't actually get to the music, but after the internet, there was like a second wave of rock and roll. And I started to listen to all these bands because of the internet. 
But there was like 30 years after they were big. So it was like a second wave in Peru. And now all these big bands are coming back, dude, because now we know, you know, now we cannot get access to all the music, you know. I never really thought about that. That's that's neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool because it feels like it's it's new. It's like the first time they are coming, but actually they've played, like if the Red Hot Chili Peppers come, it's like, a, well, that was like 10 years ago. Now, you know, like the internet's been around for like over 20 years, you know. But it's but it's been like still the people are like embracing the culture because it's got like more identity. It's like a new thing to be part of this rock and roll culture, even if you're young. You yeah. Know? Like you yeah. can fit in, you know. Let me yeah. show you this. This is my uh it's my instrumental album I just made. Like I was saying, I grew up listening to rock and roll, but I now I'm doing cumbia. Dude, I it's, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So I can find that out there on YouTube. All right. Yes. I'm, I'm going to send it to. Oh, very cool. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. I will check that out. Awesome. Great. Okay. Yeah. I mean. So now so this, this is your, that was your rock stuff, right? This is my rock stuff? No, this is my cumbia stuff. Okay, okay. It's if you see like in cumbia, they got they don't have actual drums, just percussion, like timbales and guido, right? I love this. This would be great. I'll check it out for sure. Yeah, I, I, I used to do rock and roll, but mostly like covers. I grew up like playing rock and roll. I did some rock and roll albums too. But uh in this kind of like in this kind of cumbia, they use mostly guitars, right? Right. So I was trying to come up with something new that could be presented to an American audience, kind of like it doesn't feel so like you know like cumbia is normally like really loud and fast. So I try to do like some slower, like like closer to rock and roll, right? Right. That's pretty cool. That's it. Sounds kind of like Rob Zombie. You know Rob Zombie? Yeah. <laughs> My band now, man, those guys, uh, they both come, they both play with Latin bands. They play with, uh, my drummer plays with Robert Rodriguez. Okay, okay. I think he's uh, like a film director, Latin. Yeah. His, his, uh, they're out touring with uh, George Lopez, the comedy show. I who George Lopez is. And then uh, uh, my other, uh, my bass player is Vallejo Brothers. And I think they've, in the Latin music scene, they got Vallejo great... Brothers, like this, right? Uh, it's B E L L. This, right? Vallejo, Vallejo. Yeah. Val Val Vallejo, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, those, those, they rock. They're really good. So you got a lot of uh, contacts in the business. Let's say it that way. <laughs> Uh, well, I've been in it for a long time. Um, yeah, when I uh, when I was eighteen, I moved to Nashville, uh, uh -huh. right up, and uh, and I started and got involved with the band called Taboo, and uh, they were a, a, a local club band down there, and uh, I got to meet a lot of people through them. Those guys were well connected. Uh, that that sort of helped me. Uh huh. Yeah, I got to meet Ron Keel. He he was their guitar player. I took his place. And he went off to L.A. to form a band called Steeler, uh, with, a, with a band called Steeler. And he got to be really big, had a lot of hit songs on MTV and stuff. So uh, that was cool. I, I still know Ron. Ron just, he's got a radio show. Uh, he's uh, still big time. And he, he recently played uh, my album on his show. And I thought that was really cool. It was nice of him. Uh -huh. Ron, Ron. Keel. You looked him up a minute ago. K-E-E-L. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ron. Yeah. yeah okay yeah. so he was he was in tour in latin america you say right yeah he's been he's everywhere this guy's right. wide open yeah he's so, always been heroes what was that i said he's always been one of my heroes he he was always he really worked it ron's ron's a good guy and he, he was really uh had a good work ethic okay so he's played in keel steeler black sabbath He's played in Black Sabbath too. 
Well, I mean, there was a brief time where they were without a, without a singer there. He he sort of tried out for them, and you know, oh, right. and I don't know if he done shows with them or not. Okay, so he's worked with them or something. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. I, I was such a Black Sabbath fan. Steeler, the band, right? Yeah, and you know, actually, uh, it, I think they were heavily involved Gene, with Gene Simmons and stuff. Had had a lot to do with them. Right, uh, right. Yes, yeah. So. Steeler was involved with Gene Simmons. Well, I mean, yeah, somehow I think he got him a deal. I don't know the whole story, but uh, uh -huh. yeah, it, it it was the whole scene at that time. I wish I'd followed Ron out to Hollywood in those days. It was like 1931 <laughs> when he left. So you moved to Nashville, right? You you're from Virginia. Yeah, yeah, and actually, the guy that got me. Guy whose band I played in it, Ron's band was in all that stuff. Later, a few years later, he got me. He was David Allen Coe. Uh, he was David Allen Coe's band leader, and he got me a job playing guitar with David Allen Coe. And that was short lived. I mean, I was uh, I was a wreck at the time, but uh, but anyway, I, I uh, through that I got to play. You know, I got to meet Waylon Jennings, and you know, uh, some uh, I got to you know popped off with a few of the big ones yeah so, man so it's been quite a ride yeah that's true okay so you're saying you moved to nashville when you decided to take music seriously i guess now if you want to see something let me tell you a little story <laughs> right <Okay. quick. laughs> you got me talking now i'm gonna tell you a story uh, uh and it, it's cool that you got the ability to pull this up my first band when i was 18 when i come back from nashville was called white boy and the average rat band, R A T, white boy and the average rat band. There okay. you go. All right. So, what happened was, is uh, there was a guy that owned a little record store and uh -huh. uh, work, was working for him. And he would let me come in. And even he had a little four track in the back, a little four track reel to reel. And this was like 1979, 1980. And I was, 1980. And I was, uh, we recorded a little album of, uh, Four, four tracks and I saved up, you know, me and some guys saved up yard mowing money and stuff and uh, had 250 albums pressed. Well, we okay. gave them away at shows and whatever. So flash forward about 10 years later, I got a guy that lives here in town. Uh, I live in a small town in Appalachian, coal mining town. And he was here from England. Uh, he was a record collector. He worked in the mine of business, but he was a record collector for a hobby. And he says, if you got any more of those albums left, uh, he said, I'll give you 50 bucks a piece for it. And I was like, whoa. And uh, so I had a couple of them. I took them to him. And he showed me in a book where in these uh, little collector's magazines where they were selling around the world for like $125 a copy. So that, this was back in 1990. Some. And flash forward now, that particular album, has that, that first album, White Boy Never Trap Band, has been bootlegged twice with two other companies. And it's being officially released twice now. The second official release will be in uh, January of this year coming up. But uh, it the, that original copy sells for over a thousand dollars a copy if you can get one of them. So okay, okay, you can buy it on that website, writingecrex.com. Yeah, that's uh, that's what's coming out in that that one will be coming out in January. Unless it's already out. I mean, it may already be. I don't know. But I think the vinyl comes out in January. Okay, so here it says White Boy and the Average Rat Band full LP. That's the only LP they had, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and you were in this band? It's my band. I wrote all of it. Actually, I played all the instruments on this. These guys okay. pictured are just for the live. For We had a live band. I'd go out and play the shows. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Okay, that's pretty cool. Michael Madden, yeah? yeah. So okay, this sounds to me like a like a you know like a little golden secret of rock and roll, like a bootleg. No one can actually like like no not a lot of people know about this, but a real true connoisseur of rock and roll will gonna will have this record, right? That's 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 true. It's it's uh, I tell everybody that album, even though it was you know I was didn't know what I was doing. It's kind of for a more sophisticated <laughs> audience. The people that come and look for this know what they're they specific. They know what they're looking for. Like the other album, the Matney album that Stevie helped me do. You know, he uh -huh. told me 
will create you a whole new audience. And it's like for the generalized, it appeals to more people, you know. Uh, and I'm just noticing when I'm in here, I'm looking at this. I got my shirt on. I hope that's not bad. You're not supposed to wear your own shirt, but it's only thing clean. <laughs> only thing clean at the house. So there you go. That's pretty cool. I like it. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, if you don't like your stuff, who's gonna, right? So <laughs> you gotta be first a fan of yourself. I mean, there's no nothing wrong with that. But this is pretty cool. I'm actually impressed. I mean, this is new for me, and I can see the difference in the music. I know about metal. This is like faster, and yeah. like you're saying, it's a different time of your life. You were much younger. Your new stuff is cool too. Like you can jam to it. You can like it's more like maybe like you know like dance along, right? This one's more like heavy stuff. He had a say, and he would, he would always say the strippers have to be able to dance to it, and the guys have to be able to <laughs> dance to it. Rock high yeah. Ten, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Hey, let me listen to this. I love this kind of endings. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool, man. So this still sells. Do you get... Do you get a... Royalties from this album, so you get money for these albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's uh, that's my other record label is Riding Easy. I got two record labels, one for the Matney album and one for this album. And then oh. there was there was also let me let me show you one more. There was a third album. There was a second White Boy and Average Rap Band album. Uh -huh. uh, White Boy, just White Boy and Average Rap Band. Love my ride. It's the name of the album. There was a second album then. Yeah, it was called Love My Ride. Love My Ride. Cool. Let me see. Uh, so it's oh, uh, let me put it here. White boy and the average rap band. Wow, how'd you come up with that name? <laughs> we were probably <laughs> I don't know. I don't hard to say what we were doing at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great, man. And then you said, "Love my ride." Like this one, your car, right? Yeah, exactly. And this is uh this one was done in uh I think maybe 2019 or something. I got another subscriber. Yeah, so anyway. You into cars? I, I, well I have been in the past. Right now, I man, I live on a farm, so right now <laughs> I need a <laughs> You need a pickup. Yeah, so Oh, yeah. Dude, I have a lot of questions about the music scene in Nashville and your how you get started and all. We got to do this in a longer format, though, because I'm running out of time. But uh, I really appreciate you being here, man. Oh, this has been fun, man. I like talking to you. So, uh, sure, anytime. I'm going to also be having group conversations with other musicians. So if you want to come, you're invited, man. I normally do them Saturdays and Sundays. That sounds very yeah. interesting. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you can bring a lot of stories to the table, you know? Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> very cool. It's pretty cool. It's your studio, right? Uh, this is actually on Music Row in Nashville. A oh. friend of mine. Jay's place. Uh huh. I see you got like a wide, like you can do different styles of rock and roll too. Yep. Right. You like punk? Next time out, I'll let you hear some of my bluegrass. Bluegrass. Yeah. Uh huh. You know what bluegrass is, right? I know it's a style of music, but I'm not really familiar with it. Okay, it's like uh, more. It's more mountain music, uh, hillbilly music. Uh, you got your fiddle and you got your uh, dobro and uh -huh. that kind of sound. Yeah. I do a little gospel stuff like that. You might like that. Next time we'll maybe I'll turn you on to some of it. Bluegrass. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You into bluegrass too? Yeah, yeah. Uh if you go Matney and Calvary, you'll see bluegrass. Matney and Calvary. How to write that? C A L yeah. C A L B A R Y. B-A-R-Y, Calvary? B is in Victor. Oh, 
Calvary. Oh, Calvary. Calvary. Oh. Pretty good right up top. Awesome, man. Yeah. It's kind of folk, right? Like folk music? Exactly. You know, Americana is really big right now in the States, or it has been here for the last little bit, so. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wow, I can see some similarities with Latin American folk music. Oh, is that right? Very cool. Yeah, with like mountain music, just like you say, like mountain Peruvian music. Yeah. How about that? That sounds pretty good. I'm subscribing to. Oh, thank you very much. I think this one's got the best sound. Oh. Right? Hey. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. I have a friend who has like a punk band, Christian punk band. I'm going to share it later. Maybe. Do you like punk rock? I do, man. Now, that's the first time I've ever heard that, a Christian punk rock. I <laughs> yes, love it. Sir. Uh -huh. But it's in Spanish, though. But I'm also going to share it. It's pretty good. Do you speak Spanish now? Uh, you know, I've failed that twice in school. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I recognize a few words. But... Okay, okay. This is beautiful, man. Oh, well, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. I got to finish, though, now because I got my next guest on. But let's definitely do a full time in, in a yeah. uh, long. Yeah. Anytime. I'm glad we make it happen. Finally, I'm sorry for the hold up. And uh, I appreciate you. Really appreciate it, man. I'll be in touch with you in a minute. OK, Mr. Medney. <laughs> I see you, man. Thank you. Bye. Bye.